A seriously dumb question in ham radio. Now, let me tell you something. There are no such things as dumb questions. Okay, I'm going to say this right off the bat. This is an article I found, and the title of it is Seriously Dumb Question Why? Question mark. This is a Reddit article, and I think, and, and it's, it's, it's answered very well by folks on Reddit. But I don't think there are such things as dumb questions. Don't let anyone tell you your question is dumb. If you have a question about ham radio, you're welcome to ask it on this channel. Uh, join us on Discord, hamradio2.com forward slash Discord for any and all ham radio questions. We're going to read this one, and I want to know what you guys think about it. Check this out. So this is this is the, uh, the article right here, uh, written by Our Region 5804. Okay. He says, I've had my ticket for quite some time and I still like I still feel like I know nothing about ham radio. I have all the equipment, dabble with HF, spend some time listening to and rag chewing on uh, two meter seventy centimeter. But over the years I have never really gotten into it like I was hoping. I don't know why. I foolishly always feel judged when I'm keying up and trying to start a conversation. I know that's on me. Now that's a very real thing. Mike Fright is a very real thing. And being a ham radio operator for 30 years myself, I still feel that sometimes. I still feel that sometimes. If I'm driving around in a new area, if I find a new repeater, or if I find, a more likely, if I find a repeater or a, fre a simplex frequency where a conversation is already going, and there might be a pause or a break in there somewhere, and I might feel like joining in the conversation, sometimes I get mic fried. But we need to get over that. Me, you, we all need to get over that. I've issued my 2025 repeater challenge. Key up your repeater once a day. Make a log. Send it to me at the end of the month. Somebody's going to win a new mobile radio at the end of eh, at least the first three or four months of the year. More importantly, I have a silly question, he says. Okay, again, I don't really think your question's silly at all. I think this is a very good question. When you're driving around and in an area you don't know, Short of looking up repeaters on your phone and then programming the radio in accordingly, why are the radios not smart enough to find local repeaters, figure out the input and output frequency, and the CTCSS tone? Why can't you key a frequency, and if there's a repeater, it can't discover the correct settings and just work? I always end up filling my memory slots with dozens of repeaters I will never hit across all the states that I travel. Most of the time, those repeaters are either offline or the info is outdated and wrong. Seems like there should be a way to just go, uh, key and go. Am I being just being an idiot because this magic already exists or I just never explored my radio enough to know? Well, two thoughts on that. Number one, that really kind of does exist. The problem is the info you're getting is not kept up very well. So there's two ways to look at this. Number one, you can load repeat, repeater databases into ICOM radios, and I believe you can do it in Yezu radios as well. Admittedly, I've never actually played around with that very much. It's, it's something I should do. If you guys think that is a good video for me to demonstrate a repeater uh, database loading, looking up the call when you're traveling, because you can add a GPS dongle to the ICOM ID5100, which is what I have in the truck, and I believe you can add it to some of the Yezu models, the FTM 502, I think. But then the GPS tells your radio where you are, and it says, okay, everything within a 25 or a 50 mile radius, here's all your repeater list. You load it onto an SD card from your computer, put it in your radio. Your radio has that in memory now, and it just follows the GPS signal, and it can do that. The problem is that a lot of those repeaters that you're downloading on the SD card, the information is not up, up kept by the repeater owner. It's all up to the repeater owner to update the information. Some of it's done by ARRL, some of it's done by uh, ham radio clubs, if it's a club-owned repeater, but a lot of it's done by the individual repeater owner, and a lot of it is not updated. So it's kind of a it's kind of a catch-22. You can load all of this information in your radio. Is it upkept very well? Maybe, maybe not. A lot of radios will do CTCSS tone searches. You can go into a certain menu and you can search the tone. Now, there has to be activity coming back to you for the radio to hear, but you can click on a button in the menu and it'll say search tone, and it will find that CTCSS tone that that repeater needs. There's also, especially on two meters, because two meters is so narrow banded, there's also a list of most commonly used frequencies throughout the nation. Like you can get probably 20 or 30, nah, maybe not that many, 10 to 20 frequencies on the two meter band that are used everywhere because you got to remember if you have a repeater on let's say my local two meter repeater here is 147.100 megahertz now put a comment below if you have a repeater near you that's on that same frequency that repeater near me which is the hearst amateur radio club w5 hrc is the call sign on it that repeater here will reach 
20, 30, maybe 40 miles on a good day. If we've got some VHF ducting, it might reach 100 miles, okay? But normally speaking, it covers the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex and not much farther. So people in Oklahoma City aren't going to hear it. People in Texarkana aren't going to hear it. People down in Austin, Houston, San Antonio, you're not going to hear it. So there's other repeaters on that same frequency in other areas, and they're all 20, 30, 40, 50 miles reaching. Some of them that are on higher towers reach up a lot taller than that. If you have a mountain range in your area, then you're going to reach out a lot farther than that. So it really depends on how far the repeater can reach, how far up it is. You have to submit all that information when you register, when you, um, yeah, when you register with repeater with whatever registration service you, you use. Height of the antenna, output power, EIRP, effective something radiation power, <laughs> which is basically the dB gain of your antenna uh, multiplied by the output of the, uh, the repeater, 50 watts, 100 watts, whatever it is. And my point is that frequency can be used over and over again throughout the United States. And there's a list of repeater frequencies that are commonly used. And it wouldn't be a terrible idea to put those frequencies into your radio. Maybe I will compile a list and try to put something like that together for you guys. So once again, I don't think that's a dumb question at all. I think that's a very good question. And uh, this first comment here, forget about repeater listings and programming. You are right. It's mostly a complete waste of time. What I do when visiting a new area is put out an, interest, an interesting call on 146.52 Simplex and try to scare up a local or two. Then I ask what the most used repeater in the area is when local net time and when local net times are. Then I program that data by hand if needed. In most urban areas, there are often a small handful of stations monitoring the call frequency. I would like to believe that's true. I, I have trouble believing that's true, but it, I think it's becoming more true. If we go down through this, and I'll put a link to this in the, in the description below, all of this. And these people are, a lot of people are talking about uh, calling, monitoring 146.52, which is a national simplex calling frequency for two meter simplex, two meter FM simplex. And then a lot of these comments are about the calling frequency, but let me tell you something. So I, I initiated my 2025 repeater challenge to you. And what we, what we really didn't talk about during that repeater challenge is the repeater challenge in a nutshell is to key up your local repeater once a day, make a log of it, send me the log at the end of the month, and I'm going to pick a winner and you're going to win a brand new mobile radio, dual band mobile radio. This is for local comms. This is for when you're in your home area, you have a lo home local repeater trying to get more activity in the home local repeater. On top of that, what we all should be doing, all of us, all of us should be doing this, especially on road trips. If you are on a road trip, you should be monitoring 146.52, and you should be periodically calling out, uh, throwing out your call sign on 146.52 on a regular basis. I do this. I monitor 146.52. I don't throw out my call sign as often as I do. My personal goal for 2025 is to start doing that more. But there's been two or three times where I've been testing radios in this shack over the last two or three months over here, and I was doing a test on 146.52, and I had people come back to me, and I'm like, Wow, there's people actually listing. Now. Throw out your call sign sometimes and see what kind of uh, information you can drum up. Throw out your call sign sometimes on 146.52 and see what kind of information you can stir up. This comment right here is a perfect example of what I was talking about. It doesn't quite do what you're looking, for, uh, what you're asking. But with the Icon ID5100, which again is what I is my main radio in my truck right now, I can load up a bunch of repeaters ahead of time with their coordinates. Then I'll use the GPS to tell me the closest ones. Still have to load them ahead of time. There isn't a utility for that, so I'll just save off a few different ones if I need to. Just got the radio on Friday. I haven't played with this because I don't have an SD card reader, but this was a big thing that pushed me towards this radio. And a commenter replied and says, I believe the ID52 can do this also. Yes, it can. Blue Cat does something similar for the IC7000 7100. Several Yezus also, yeah, so ID51, which does that. That feature was the thing that pushed me to this radio. Just got my SD card working. It was super easy to add 1,500 of my closest repeaters. Scan near looks like my GPS and scans all the repeaters within 100 miles. It was easy, and I couldn't be happier with the purchase. Okay, so the Icom ID5100 will do this. I think there's a way to do it on the Yezu also. I'm going to have to look that up. Admittedly, I don't I don't have a lot of experience with doing that. Let me know if that's something you guys would like to see. Do you want to see a video on that? I'll go learn it because I've, I've told you several times that I learn more than you do because I could go learn something before I make a video about it, <laughs> which is cool. This is totally cool. First, let me tell you about today's sponsor. Uh, this video is sponsored by PCBWay.com. Bring all of your project ideas to life at PCBWay.com. They do custom circuit board printing, flexible circuit boards, CNC printing, um, commercial grade CNC printing, commercial grade 3D printing, 
all kinds of cool stuff. A lot of meshtastic cases and a lot of cases for projects are printed over at PCBWay.com. Check out the link in the description below, and if you end up ordering from them, be sure to tell them that Ham Radio 2.0 sent you. This right here was probably my most favorite comment. Yeah, and I don't want to call anyone out, but I'm not calling you out. This, this commenter is, okay? Get your general. It opens up the entire world. No repeaters or other infrastructure necessary. Okay, he's not wrong. This comment was the one that I liked. Man, this is like the worst answer ever. Is there a technical reason why this thing on VHF can't happen? Simply get HF radio and upgrade your license. Why is this subreddit obsessed with you brought the wrong car answers to why is my car doing this? I completely agree with that. Getting your upgrade to general and extra is an excellent idea, but we need to be more receptive to people's questions with VHF UHF. Again, I'm doing this 2025 repeater challenge. I want us to use our repeaters more. We've got a ton of repeaters out there, guys. There's a ton of repeaters out there. I get comments all the time about how they don't get used. So let's start using our repeaters. Let's make a list of useful repeaters. People that are driving around in new areas, okay? If there's activity on your repeater, maybe they're just going to scan through the 2-meter band or the 440 band. And they'll pick you up and start talking to you. And then all of a sudden, you've got more activity on your repeater. But it's up to you and I, the local ham radio operators in that area, to use our repeaters. We need to use our repeaters more. We need to use our repeaters more. Key up your repeater every day. Pick a repeater. Pick four repeaters if you want to. Say, well, there's four near me. Good. Key all those up every once a day. Or at least pick one to key up every day, and the other three key them up at least once a week. Key up your repeater, throw out your call sign, see what kind of conversations you can get into. The long and short of it is that there are radios that will do this sort of, kind of, like you're talking, but not really. You have to load the database into the radio like the ICOM does, and you download it from uh, dstarinfo.net, I think is the website, and it and it loads D, uh, dstar repeaters onto your SD card, but it loads all the analog stuff too. So it downloads the database, loads it onto an SD card. You put it, the SD card in the radio, and then the radio will tell you what's near you. Okay, so you do have to add a GPS dongle to the ID5100 because it doesn't come with it by, fa by factory default. I'm not sure if you can Bluetooth that or not. I'm not sure. I'm, I'm going to have to research that. There's a lot of stuff the ID5100 does that I've never even touched on. Okay, I got several repeaters programmed in my own radio, but it will totally do this. You can load databases in there. Are the databases maintained? Sometimes yes, sometimes no. I think the answer of uh, monitoring 146.52 and asking local hams what the repeaters are in that situation, I think that's a great idea. I think that's a great idea. If you're in the North Texas area or um, in the Galveston area, I can tell you what are some really, really good repeaters in those areas. You guys have a repeater in your area that is a good repeater, whether it gets used or not. Put a comment below. Let me know what the repeater is, what the frequency is. If you think it's one that should be you, if you're thinking this repeater is an excellent, it's got great coverage, it sounds really good, it's well-maintained, but nobody ever uses it, put a, a location and a frequency and a PL tone in the description below. We'll see if we can get something a little bit more going on that. So thanks for watching today. Check out these videos over here because YouTube thinks you want to watch this one next. 73.